Hi, I'm Bill the Domestic Monk. Thanks for watching. So here I am at this beautiful lakeside marina on Watts Bar Lake in Spring City, Tennessee. Beautiful out here, let me tell you. And today I'm going to do another Catholic gym video. So today is November 16th, but a couple of weeks ago when we were in Texas, we were coming down um, from New Mexico to Austin to visit my good friend Pat Rick. I hope you'll say a uh, prayer for him. Um, well, it might be too late by the time I t post this video, but Pat goes into surgery tomorrow for a quintuple bypass. So he's one of my dear friends. I've been praying for him. It was great to see him there a couple of weeks ago, and I'm looking forward to talking to him after he gets out of surgery, God willing, successfully tomorrow, and uh, back on the road to health. So at any rate, on the way down, um, you know, I was looking for something we could do. We had uh, a day we had to kill so that my schedule, our schedule, and Pat's schedule would sync. And I read about the uh, painted churches of Texas, and I've never heard about those before. So apparently there are a number, I think up to about 20 churches throughout. Uh, most of them in a kind of southeastern Texas um, that were built by Czech and German immigrants and they are just amazingly beautiful churches. So we found one in a little town called Fredericksburg, uh, which is a beautiful town in and of itself. It's kind of a, a Western town. It has a main street going down the middle, all kinds of beautiful and unique shops. It was just a beautiful little town. They have a pioneer um, museum village that you kind of walk through and look at the buildings and uh, right there in the center of town. But I went to, we went there to go to um, St. Mary's Church. So you have the main road going through town. I don't remember what the road is, but just off one street is where St. Mary's was. And we pull over and we park right on the corner. And the first surprise I got, there were two churches right there, St. Mary's churches. The one right on the corner was the original church. And that was built in like the, started building it in the late 1800s or mid 1800s and finished it around 1900 or so and it was a, the the main church for several years and then they built the next one the other one next door to it which is still the active church and it's a big parish i mean they have the parish center off to the left and um, um, the rectory behind it and they have a catholic school across the street there were little kids walking across the street in their school uniforms that was cool but these churches were beautiful the old one right on the corner um, there's a little plaque out front. We read that and I walked in and I was surprised. I figured because, you know, it, it, it's not listed as an active church that, that it was probably, uh, you know, who knows? I didn't know what the condition would be inside or whatever, but I saw someone come out. So I popped in. Well, they had adoration going on. And so that was a surprise to us. And the church was beautiful, very understated. They had these uh, two, I mean, it's how I like churches, If you, the layout of a church, if you follow my channel. You go in, there were two rows of pews down the middle. They had kind of blue padded uh, seats, but they were wooden pews. And everything in the interior of that church was white, except for the Stations of the Cross that were very subtle going down both sides, and they were wood carvings, um, and they were the, not painted, just the color of the wood very understated but beautiful and the church was white with blue and white stained glass windows they were running down the side of the church and then above the altar there was a round one above the altar no uh, religious scenes no saints or anything like that just some beautiful colors and it, it was really nice inside the altar was amazing um, very ornate altar there was a statue to the left side of the Blessed Mother and to the right side of the altar, they had a statue of Jesus um, exposing the Sacred Heart. Beautiful little church. Like I said, the Blessed sac Sacrament was out on display. There were a couple of people there for adoration. So we were able to sit there with the Blessed Sacrament and, and uh, you know, prayer and contemplation there for a little bit. It was beautiful. Just, just a very beautiful old church. In the back of the church, they had this information area with these racks with all kinds of information for free. Catholic answers books on everything, um, uh, different aspects of the Catholic faith. All of it was for free. You could have taken them all. They're amazing. Um, a lot of great, 
good information. So if there's somebody in the Fredericksburg area that's looking for or is wrestling with an issue uh, about the faith or what Catholics believe or why uh, certain things done a certain way, go right down there to St. Mary's Catholic Church, the one on the right, and you can get whatever information you need. So I came out and between the two churches, they had a little garden area, they had, which I love to see, and I've seen this a couple of different times uh, in our travels. It was a little memorial garden uh, for the unborn who unfortunately in this country are still being slaughtered in the womb by their own parents, mothers, fathers, and, and tolerated, even encouraged by many in our society. Just a great tragedy. So it was great to see that there. The main church, which is the main reason uh, we were going there, was next door, and it was a big, impressive church. I mean, that's what you think of. When I think of a uh, Catholic church, man, that's what I think of. Big stone building, a big uh, clock tower on the right-hand side with a spire on the top, beautiful arched doors and stained glass windows on the front. Just an impressive building to look at, beautiful. We go inside. And, you know, the lights weren't on in there because th the church wasn't open at that time. But even then, and, you know, with a darkened exterior, so impressive. I just wonder what it looks like when it's all lit up and, you know, it, there's light coming through those stained glass windows. It's got to be remarkable. The inside of the church, you know, pews going straight forward toward the altar. Just an impressive building. These arched um uh, there were uh, pillars going all the way down both sides with big arches and it all led your eye straight down to the altar. That altar was unbelievable. I mean just unbelievable. Large, ornate, carved altar. There, were a, there was a, a crucifix there and a couple of saints. I'm not even sure who they were on either side. Um, the, the, the tabernacle for the Blessed Sacrament right in the center. Uh, a beautiful uh, stained glass window, or not one, like five or six stained glass windows, big arched ones around there in a big dome. Just beautiful, amazing. And then off to either side, on the left-hand side, they had the Blessed Mother and a couple of saints, uh, female saints. I'm not sure who they were, so I'm not going to take a crack at it. I believe it was St. Francis uh, to, um, to the right of her the Blessed Mother and the other two female saints. And on the other side, they had St. Joseph and a couple other saints. And I think one of those saints may have been St. Killian. Uh, I'm sorry, St. Patrick. I came from St. Killian, so it's the Irish thing. But um, I'm not sure. And another one of the male saints. But all of them had these um, car beautiful painted, carved um, backgrounds that the statues were in front of that matched the altarpiece. Unbelievable, beautiful. In front of the altar, they had this very rich, dark wood altar rail and an ambo off to the left side. Beautiful wood carved ambo kind of elevated uh, from the floor of the altar um, floor. Beautiful. And to the right of that, they had this crucifix, just this large crucifix. It was like right in front of the front, the first pew on the right hand side. Beautiful big, large crucifix. And one of the things I'm seeing as I move uh, further east is, you know, it was a bloody crucifix. I mean, you know, the, the wounds uh, on the corpus of Jesus on that crucifix uh, had the blood painted on it. You know, just that altar in that church was amazing. The, the, the stained glass windows in this church were just amazing to look at. Big, tall, arched, colorful uh, stained glass windows. Amazing. And then the ceiling itself. I mean, when you looked at that ceiling and those arches, it was just incredible. And there were a couple of, I, I don't know if they were frescoes or whatever painted on the wall. Um, one of them depicted Jesus and there was another one. And they were just, you know, I, I, I really wish I had been there with the lights on because they were just so understated, but just even magnificent in that lighting. And then down the tops of the church in the archways, uh, at the tops of the archways, um, there was a portrait of each one of the 12 apostles. So 
just incredible. And then at the back of the church, they had a statue of um, La Pietra, which is the um, which is the image of the Blessed Mother with the corpus of Jesus after he was taken down from the cross. And a lot of times, I think it's based on uh, Michelangelo's carving, which was done in marble or ivory, whatever it was, if it's white. But this one was uh, painted, and, you know, it was a, a statue, beautiful. I mean, that church was something else. You know, I, I, I wish we had more time uh, in Texas, and I do plan to get back there to look at those churches again. I mean, because that place is a gem. And then Fredericksburg, like I, I touched on the beginning of the video, it's just a cool city, just a cool city. And we stopped into one of the stores and we asked the guy, hey, is there any, you know, we have our dog with us, so we always try to get him out in the middle of the day sometime. We asked him, hey, is there any place we can go for a hike? He goes, oh, yeah, go down to Ladyburg Johnson Park. It was about four miles outside of town. We went out there, beautiful park. They had a um, nature trail. It was only about a mile or something long, but we walked, it was along a river, and we walked along there, and they had a, you know, a bird sanctuary uh, with a blind. We could watch all the birds, and they fed them, so, you know, of course, it drew them in. A butterfly um, uh, sanctuary, just beautiful. And then he told us on the other end of town, so after we did that, we drove to the other end of town, and we went to a place called Cross Mountain. Now, it's not really a mountain, but there isn't a lot of hills out there anyway. It's just kind of a hill. Um, and they had also had a little park with a nature trail at the bottom of that. But uh, you could go up to the top of this hill, and it you know, was a nothing of a walk, a couple of minutes to get up there. But they had this beautiful cross up there and just a view of the whole city. It was amazing. So we got those two hikes in, and then we drove through the town again one more time and kind of checked out some of the shops. I guess Fredericksburg in the wintertime, according to my friend Pat, is amazing. Uh, around Christmas, they decorate that whole place. That's just something else. And then also they had, we, we noticed that, we got some coffee um, on, the, on the main street across from where the churches were. And right across the street from them, they had a Pioneer Museum. So it's like they had some of the old buildings and you could walk around in there and get a tour and find out what life was like in, you know, 1800s or wherever Fredericksburg was founded. So what a great place, Fredericksburg, Texas, and uh, the Painted Church, St. Mary's Catholic Church in Fredericksburg. A Catholic gem, if you do get a chance um, to go there, it'll be well worth your time. And I'm looking forward to touring some of the others uh, in the future. So thanks again for watching. And as always, see you in Adelante.